Well, Mary Kay, the Browns got some good news as far as that Monday evening game goes against the Raiders. Both teams will have until 2 p.m. on Monday to activate players if needed, make roster moves if needed before that game. The deadline previously would have been 4 o'clock on Sunday. So you gain almost a full day to try and bring these players back. And under these new testing rules, Mary Kay, that means there's a chance that a number of these guys could end up on the field. Absolutely, Dan. I think this is huge. It gives them another 48 hours from Saturday afternoon when we're taping this almost until the game on Monday uh, or their deadline Monday at 2 p.m. to get these guys back. It breathes new life into some of these 24 players and three coaches that are currently on uh, COVID-19 lists or out with COVID-19, including Baker Mayfield, including Case Keenum, Jarvis Landry, Wyatt Teller. There are a lot of these guys, if they are asymptomatic, now have a really good chance of getting back onto the football field. So I would have to say that in the last 24 hours, every effort has been made by the NFL uh, to help these teams, these COVID positive ravaged, positive ravaged teams, get their guys back and field a competitive football team. Yeah, the key phrase today from Kevin Stefanski was basically minute by minute. That's how the Browns are, are living this as they go through the next couple of days. Uh, we did get to talk to Nick Mullins today, and if nothing changes, he would be the starter on Monday. I, I guess what were your impressions of, of Nick when we heard from him? I really enjoyed that conversation that we had uh, with Nick today. Uh, just like a lot of other guys on this football team, He's, uh, he's incredibly unflappable. He goes with the flow. He's very professional. He's confident. He started, a, you know, a significant amount of games. So this isn't like uh, Tim Boyle getting out there for the Lions and making his first NFL start. Uh, Nick Mullins has started 16 games in his career, eight in 2018 and eight again in 2020. And so he's been out there and he has also run this system that the Cleveland Browns run. The Kyle Shanahan system is the exact same system uh, that Kevin Stefanski runs handed down to him from Gary Kubiak. So, uh, so he knows what he's doing out there. Uh, and I think that gives him a comfort level. Now, a couple more COVID updates to go back to that just from today, as we're recording this on Saturday, Tack McKinley is off the COVID-19 list. Now, the Browns need that because Jadavian Clowney did test positive on Friday. So it would be a pretty quick turnaround to maybe get him back. Uh, and of course, he was out with an illness, so we assume that that counts as symptomatic. And then uh, bad news, James Hudson III, the rookie, goes on the COVID list. As it stands right now, the Browns are, of course, without Jack Conklin, who's out for the year, but also without Jedrick Wills at left tackle, who's on the COVID list. Yes, you know what? At this point, they really better hope that they can get Jed Wills back or Wyatt Teller back for this football game. Uh, because now, once again, as you mentioned, being down James Hudson, starting right tackle, uh, that can be dicey against this Raiders pass rush. They have two of the better rushers in the NFL in Max Crosby and Yannick Nagakawe. Uh, we've talked about this. Crosby leads the NFL with 78 pressures. So you want to make sure you can protect whoever is back there at quarterback. And, uh, and now they're in a little bit of a dicey situation with that. Okay, so technically, this is our Friday, so I guess we need to do a thing to watch. We tried to do this on Thursday for a video that never saw the light of day because news went crazy right after we recorded it. So I guess before we go, Mary Kay, give me one thing to watch. Again, as things stand now, because this is ever-changing, give me one thing to watch on Monday evening. Well, because we don't know exactly who's going to be starting at quarterback for the Browns, I think I'm going to uh, be watching – what the Browns are able to do in regards to Derek Carr, who has a good arm and is very high up, I think maybe even second in the NFL in yards and uh, does very well against pressure. So I'm going to be looking at what now that they have Tack McKinley back and they still have Miles Garrett, uh, can they get enough pressure on Derek, uh, get him down on the ground and maybe even get the ball out enough to help win this football game. And I'm going to watch those two guys you mentioned earlier, Max Crosby and Yannick Ngakwe, whether it's Nick Mullins or Case Keenum or Baker Mayfield, you don't want any of these guys to have to deal with pressure. Uh, none of them really necessarily excel when they're under pressure. And that's really one thing that the Raiders do well. Those two guys uh, can create pressure. I, Max Crosby leads the NFL in pressures. Yannick Ngakwe is top 15. So it's very much like Miles Garrett to Davian Clowney-ish 
with those two guys bookending that line. So I'm watching how the Browns deal with that, especially as they're shorthanded uh, at the tackle position one way or another. Okay, whatever happens. And again, like I said, this thing is ever changing. A lot can happen between now and Monday at 5 p.m. So whatever it is, we're going to cover it all at cleveland.com slash Browns.